So that's another reason I thought you might like that. <laughs> I remember hearing about Westernhead. But yeah, she had a goth uh, vampire look in uh, Wesker mode. Mm. Oh, you found that, have you? No, I'm doing something else. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I could have sworn the way you were going, hmm, you were probably looking at it. <laughs> I'm role playing right now. I'm oh. trying to figure out what my next response is going to be. Fair, fair. You ever role play? Yep. Text role play? Yep. Oh. And if you want to be more specific, uh, up as well. I've done that too. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was pretty much what you meant. No, I'm just doing regular roleplay. Alright, fair enough. Fucking damn eel. This boss fight probably wouldn't be as bad if it didn't just keep respawning this fucking eel. But yeah, I thought the back of chambers looked great in uh, that game. <laughs> you mean the movie? No, in the game I mentioned, <laughs> where she was oh, all the gothic vampire version. Of her. Yeah, the gothic vampire version of her. I am keeping up sometimes. <laughs> With what you're saying? No, oh, okay, I get it. I get it. Yeah, there we go. No, it was just my, my frustration in this, I was make going, ugh. It responds anyways. <laughs> Oh, it's about... Ah, fair enough. Midnight? No, no, no. Not quite yet. No, I just have to be mindful of the time, because I do do my role-playing today. Shattered Star, I think it... yeah. Shattered Star, where I play a complete dumbass. <laughs> I already do that. <laughs> well, I play a, a uh, barbarian. Uh, well, her class is fighter, but she's had a barbarian kind of upbringing. It's quite funny when the characters has it where, like, um... She's made a rule where she can only speak if she puts her hand up, so <laughs> I just keep putting my hand up and being like, okay, I, uh, I want to say this, and then every time she does that, 
she's treated like a child by this other character. It's like, very good, Kalida. Well done. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> and it's fucking hilarious. Focus on this real quick. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I was getting somewhere. Hmm. Very good, Kalia. Well done. <laughs> Let's You'll get it eventually. Uh, it was it was really funny with um this one other character that also kind of treats her like a dumbass because she is a dumbass. <laughs> and. Uh, they went into this um, room at one point, this character did, and the other people were like, uh, yeah, um, fascinating room, that. Well, my character in this roleplay, mm -hmm. well, the main one I had before he died, yeah, at least, was considered a dumbass, <laughs> an idiot. But, because of that, he was also considered so unpredictable that even the admin, like DM yeah. of our roleplay, says, no one else can play him but you. <laughs> He's so unpredictable that you're the only one who can play him right. That should be quite the compliment then. Yeah. To have such a unforgettable character that they can't imagine anybody else playing that character. He didn't last very long in the real play story. Ooh. <laughs> His stupidity <laughs> didn't kill him, did it? <laughs> it actually did. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of funny that that um this other character that also doesn't think well of her. They went into the room because uh, the these uh, um, female mercenaries were like, yeah, it's an interesting room in there. He went in there, came back out, and his uh, voice had changed. Now, we didn't know necessarily what this meant. Until he took his helmet off, where, um, he is now a she. <laughs> that explains a lot. You're like, yeah, and then, you know, we even point this out to them, and the character's like, what are you talking about? What do you mean, what's, what's weird about me? There's nothing weird about me, what, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then we, we're just like, uh-huh, because, yeah, this character was not going to listen to us. No matter what we said. And then when we finally got out of the cave and got to a river, um, they look into the river and they're like, What the hell? <laughs> it's like, Well, we told you. <laughs> Can't blame anyone else at this point. Well, the way my character died with his stupidity mm -hmm. was I went too far into the meta game. Ah. Because my character had this ability to know things. Uh huh. He just knew things. That mm. was the canon explanation, at least. Huh. But in terms of gameplay, it was because I was metagaming. Hmm. But the DM just kind of allowed it. Like, I don't 
really care that you're metagaming. We'll just figure out an explanation in universe for why he just knows things. Hmm. Usu um, I... Usually, metagaming is always frowned upon, but it's. Uh, it You can make it work for you in certain circumstances. Like it kind of did. It wasn't even intentional. It just kind of happened and we just stuck with it. But he went off on his own doing his own little thing. Mm. At and least that's the in-universe explanation for it. He just wandered off from the group. Don't spit the he party! Got, he got captured by the main villain that we were after at that time. <laughs> A mob boss. Alright. This does and not really sound like it ended well. <laughs> And because the mob boss knew magic, she used it on him uh -huh. and killed him like that. It's a magic that uses shadows. Huh. Ah. Do you actually use any dice in this kind of role playing thing, or is it purely yeah, uh, there... purely text? Yeah, at the, t at the time it was dice rolls and all that for battles. Otherwise, it was flavor play, role play. Hmm. That does remind me of a fun, like, um, game system I experienced when I went to this convention. There was one that was kind of like that, where... Essentially, the only kind of rules were what role was a success and what wasn't. And it was... <laughs> it was a system that quite proudly said you can do insane like martial arts things like say uh, you could run towards the enemy that's firing guns at you and run on the bullets <laughs> you know oh, yeah. it it was it was kind of a flexible system where it, there weren't really rules for you running on bullets but it was like if you can pass it and you can uh, sell it in an entertaining way you can do it Well, the uh, same. My character was pretty much ripped apart by the mob boss. Yikes. I'm not sure how much detail I can go into it <laughs> on your stream. That's fine, I've got but... 18 plus. <laughs> I've got 18 plus, okay. I'm not afraid. Flesh ripped apart. Ah, weasels with my flesh. Melted down to the bone. Ooh. While he's still living. Plus, I was also gonna say, Doug, I've, I've, I, I mean, I've fucking streamed, um, Harv Harvester. That's a, that's a game with a lot of messed up stuff in it. Yeah. His flesh was ripped apart, bones, like, Melted down to the bone, kind of thing. Mm. His ribs were pulled out, kind of thing. Which really is kind of mafia sort of thing there. <laughs> uh, melting someone and down with acid. Lastly, his brain was melted down into smoothie. Inside his skull. Yummy. <laughs> A very different kind of yummy. <laughs> that did remind me of something that did make me kind of cringe on the stream, though, because there was this game where. Um, you have these people that have these psychic powers, and different people can do different things. One of them could, like, project images and things into into people against their will. And you have a run-in with this person without knowing who they are. They basically get into your head and then made a really disturbing fantasy where this woman that you kind of like is all like... Ah, uh, your brain is just so delicious. And while you're in this chair, she's, like, taking spoonfuls of brain out of your skull and eating it in front of you. 
Now, you, uh, for, for obvious reasons, the game doesn't show you this, but it certainly goes into detail of how uh, kind of messed up it is with uh, the guy even in this imagination kind of enjoying it. He isn't in real life, but in this imagination it's like, oh, he's getting all this, like, when she's eating it, she's like, enjoy he's enjoying it as well. Which was messed up as all hell. Oh, and the other thing about my character that was famous. Mm hmm. Or oh, infamous. <laughs> um, For the sounds of it. Punches things. Yeah, that. <laughs> like, literally, his only weapon is his fist. That sounds a bit How like. How are they? He literally dented a metal shield. With his fist. That. <laughs> My character hasn't quite gone to that extent, but she does like to go around smashing things as a way of fixing it. Yeah, that's what my character did too. Don't touch that console. Oh, this console literally rips the whole thing out. Which is a moment that actually did happen in the roleplay. Where we would find a scientist, and the scientist is like, This console is important, don't touch it. Oh, what, this one? On. So my character took the console and literally ripped the entire thing out. As his way of messing around with the console was just he ripped the entire thing out. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this console. I like to look at this console. It was kind of the entire thing out like a spine uh... in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> it's kind of funny. And that same character I was saying about that was all like, you know, well done. Well, you know, with the whole hand rising thing. That same character did something phenomenally stupid. That I'm pretty certain my character was gonna do if she didn't do it first. What? They had found the corpse of um, one of the rune lords, which were these powerful and evil lords that lived many, many years ago. And there was a corpse of her that was perfectly preserved. And what they figured was that this was not a corpse, but rather a clone created via the clone spell. The idea being that when you get a chance, you can relocate your soul into that body. So uh, her solution was to stab it. The problem being is that these lords were masters of magic. Oh boy. So what happened to her was um it seemed like she died but then the body wakes up <laughs> yep she's been changed into her body now oh, but God. the funniest the one of the funniest things is uh the character was the rune lord of lust Oh no. And because she was the Rune Lord of Lust, this temple of hers that, that we're inside of has lots and lots of naked depictions of her. So for fun, we're like, oh, let me guess, there's a naked depiction of this character here. And it's like, it's not me! <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> But yeah, it was <laughs> uh, unintentionally hilarious and yet somewhat beneficial because these uh, these like uh, female mercenaries they thought they were already serving um, this woman. So when they saw her, they're like, "What? What? What are you doing here? And who are these strangers that you're with?" Because, uh, and again, the actual Rune Lord wasn't here. 
I don't know where the Ringwald is, uh, or if we'll ever find out, but it was a kind of demon that had taken her appearance. That was uh, commanding them around. Which, it was believable, because again, like I said, the, uh, the person she was pretending to be was one of these ancient wizards that had pretty much their own form of magic. Messed up form of magic. Uh, sin magic, basically. Uh. Hence why she was the Rune Lord of Lust. Plus, they, uh, their whole culture corrupted the god that they originally followed. Like, her tenants were things like wealth, which became Sorry. breed. Sorry, give yeah, me a sec. That's right. Okay. Mom. My friend says happy birthday. <laughs> I don't think you heard that last part. She says thank you. Nah. <laughs> there we go. I'll wait for you to get back then. Or oh, how you already back? No, it was my mom just came. Oh, my oh, right. and reminded me to do homework. Ah. Fair enough. So yeah, that was quite... <laughs> yeah, so we've had that situation where it's like, um, her normal body is lifeless and now in the tomb, whereas she now is walking around as the ancient uh, wizard of lust. The ancient lord of lust. Oh, God. But yeah, I was, um, oh, that's what I was saying, yeah. Uh, the original tenets of this god were things like uh, wealth, like a comfortable wealth, and they've been transformed into greed, and you know, things like that, where the original tent was something far more neutral, and then they just turned it into the absolute corrupt, most corrupt version of it. And as you can guess, there's seven of them. Of course. Greed, gluttony, wrath. It's, um. Greed, gluttony, wrath, pride. Yeah. Lust. Sloth. I forget the last one. Hmm, same. Greed, gluttony, lust, I sloth. I don't exactly remember all of those. Greed, gluttony, greed, gluttony, wrath, sloth, envy. Oh, envy. Yeah. yeah. That was the last one. Apparently, the Lord of Envy didn't like the one of lust. <laughs> I can imagine several reasons why that would be. Yeah. She was also female as well, so she was also kind of. <laughs> How dare you be sexier than me? <laughs> oh, avarice! Avarice? That's another term for envy, essentially. Oh. Because it's what the uh, lantern rings are based on as well. <laughs> like the orange ring is um, avarice, which is why there's only one one of those lanterns because uh, he kill they kill the others. If you were to ask me, what's the dumbest thing your character has ever done? 
Hmm. I'd answer with fall in love with a serial killer. <laughs> well, that's not necessarily dumb. If they're a very successful serial killer, um, <laughs> then they're the perfect person to speak to if you want to hide a body. Well, considering <laughs> this world is fights every day, so. Hmm. You kind of learned why you shouldn't fall in love with a serial killer. Hmm. They don't last long. And that's why you don't fall in love with a serial killer. <laughs> oh, they didn't have any stamina. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> that was a bad... We were in a Shit. fight, right? That was a bad joke, that was. <laughs> yeah, you're in a fight. In a, in a fight with some zombie pirates. <laughs> of course it was. The captain managed to kill the Seiyu killer waifu. No! <laughs> or at least, like, managed to injure her enough that she basically couldn't last longer. Well, my character took three shots in the face with a hand cannon. Ooh. And survived. Yikes. Because you know there's the whole health and health. Yeah, health. yeah. And dice rolls. Yep. Of course, it always depends on the system, because there's always ways around that. So the zombie captain had a hand cannon, right? Mm. My character was fighting him up close and personal. Oh no. He just walked up and started fighting him, right? Hmm. I think it was like twice or so. Yeah. Or twice. The hand cannon got a crit. Oh. Like Funny. Yeah. So the flavor play was the hand cannon was stuck right into my character's face and fired. Oof. Like once or twice or something. Or three times. I forget how many times. Mm. My character still kept on fighting <laughs> like two or three shots of hand cannon in the face. That was very powerful too, so. That's why everyone thought, wow, your character is so stupidly current. <laughs> Talk about stubborn. We also managed to beat the pirates and took their ship. Nice. Where else can you find a ship that was once owned by, by zombies? Other than just steal it. Well, I meant. Crew and steal it. Well, I meant, where else could you find one if you were to sell it? <laughs> that would be a good selling point, wouldn't it? We killed the zombie pirates. Here's a pirate ship. It's a zombie pirate ship now. But are they zombie pirates or pirate zombies? <laughs> Both. <laughs> yes! It's fucking dead! No, it isn't! Shit! <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> Whoops. That took me so long to do. And then... <laughs> it fucking wasn't dead. What the hell? So long. So long. Jesus. Yeah, like I said, the health bar's nothing to joke at. I'll tell you a funny story that happened the other day in uh, Starfinder, actually. <laughs> Wasn't last week, but the week before. 
the um We were meant to be transporting weapons to this like war torn world. And these people were dicks, right? You know, they they essentially had um a concentration camp going on. These were hobgoblins that had owned this uh planet and it was under their control. And we were meant to deliver weapons to them. Uh the problem was uh well, the, the whole thing is it's set up where you're meant to fail the these missions. The first mission we had, we had to deliver these berries to this uh, guy on this other planet. We picked them up, no problem. We got attacked by uh, goblins on motorcycles. Again, that was fine, we took them out. Uh, but then when we got there, we found that the buyer uh, was dead. And his, um, his place of employ was under new management. So now, it, so now it's like, well, you know, where are we going to get the money? Because we need the money to pay for these uh, berries. And they were like, oh, I'm, I'll pay you, I'll pay you this much, which is about like, less than half price. And it's like, shit. And then you have to make a decision whether to pay the money to the company or pay it forward to the to the uh, old man who owns this um, who owns this like farm shop. And I managed to talk them into at least giving us half, which we promptly paid the old man because we thought fuck the company. <laughs> and then we had a report from the company going, oh, be aware that we're taking on. Uh, employ employee reviews based on your performance, and if you have too too much of a negative performance, then we may have to let you go. And then after every of these messages, it always said, "But remember, we work for you." <laughs> uh, and so yeah, that mission fell apart. Then we had to deliver weapons. Easy enough to pick them up. Uh. We had a little issue actually, because um, someone was captured by a bounty hunter. Then he escaped and was like, "Thanks, guys, for releasing us, and for releasing me." We didn't release him, but the bounty hunter didn't quite see it that way. <laughs> and after a gunfight, we took these weapons, transported them uh, to this place, and then we were caught, told, "Oh well, you could." transport these weapons here, or you could give them to the resistance for half price. <laughs> so we give them the resistance, but we had to transport them there. So we had to attack the hobgoblins that were, like, essentially our security detail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what happened was the most hilarious thing. They had these copters that they were chasing us with, right? And one of them... The hobgoblin was leaning out the window firing while the other one was piloting. So our resident otter, who was the crazy one with the biggest gun ever, <laughs> he shoots his grenade launcher up at the copter, but he rolled like a really shit damage dice. Oh. However, the GM then had to roll a piloting skill for the pilot, and then he fumbled it. <laughs> So, oh, no. so even though he made shit damage, it scared the pilot so much that they crashed into the ground. Twenty Imperial Walkers, we gotta hold them up until the transports get away. The pirate target will be power generators. All they were pirates, their speed, their snow speeders. <laughs> 